What we do essentially is take a, an internet connection, a Wi-Fi, a broadband or a satellite feed and we deliver it where no one else fears to go, where it's either too expensive, geographically uh, not possible because there's mountains or lakes or you know buildings even, and we take that internet connection from A and deliver it to B using old technology re-engineered in a new way. It was essentially in informing uh, government ministers and, and various stakeholders that this technology was now available. We haven't made a lot of noise about it on social media or on the internet or in the press because we've been essentially re-engineering the technology so we can deliver it faster, cheaper and more effectively. And our focus has been the Caribbean and Africa. We all talk about this great digital divide uh, and, it, and it perturbs me that, you know, uh, the actual digital divide is the wealthy and the poor. You know, where, wherever you go, you've got people who can afford 100 or 200 or 300 US dollars for internet, and then you've got the people who would love to have internet, but actually the truth of the matter is they can't possibly afford it. If you have to put food on the table, yeah, and send your kids to school, and you have the odd medical bill, the last thing you want to be thinking about is forking out a lot of money on smartphones, computers and, and tablets. It's, it's not your priority. The name TV White Space is a bit, uh, it's a bit misleading sometimes and confusing. It's not a TV station. Essentially, we take a, an existing internet connection, which could be fibre, preferably, uh, satellite if it's incredibly remote, and we turn the form factor, the product, into a signal very similar to a TV signal. Now those channels exist everywhere in the world and we simply turn that internet connection, that fibre connection, into another format and we can send it up to 50 kilometres away. At the end we have, a, we have what's called a client or the equivalent of a modem. It then picks up that signal, that TV type signal, and converts it back into Wi-Fi. It's as simple as that. We've got about 2,000 units, which we class as Generation 2, the, the stuff that we're bringing into the Caribbean is Generation 3, uh, already in use. And it's, it's one of these things that people don't actually know is there. If you think about it, if you use your electronic key fob, that's TV white noise. Uh, if you were to get on a train in many countries, the, the, the communication that stops trains crashing into each other, that's TV white noise, it's there. But this is taking it to the next level and giving it to the, the general public and saying, here's a, here's a fast way of accessing the internet without massive expense and massive infrastructure. Governments have got, have got the assets, they've got towers, yeah? they've got power, they've got security, they've got TV stations which are you know, dwindling because of digital TV and satellite TV and DSTV. So we, we try and combine the government asset with the regulator who knows what channels are available and we create a private and public partnership. We're very good at managing businesses and growing them. Government has the asset, so our vision in life is to put this product into government, into schools, into hospitals, we facilitate all the things that people are talking about at this conference, but at the same time, make some money and generate revenues for ourselves, because we're a profit-making business, but also put money back into government. It would have cost me hundreds of thousands to meet the same people individually around the, around the Caribbean or, or anywhere else in the world. Yeah? So this has become like a one-stop shop where we can showcase our products and our services. We can di talk directly to the decision makers who can go, yes, we think this is a good thing for us or no, this is not any that, that's not for us. So yeah, it's been a perfect showcase. In fact, we hadn't really put a lot of thought into something like disaster recovery. I could essentially turn up in an island an hour after the hurricanes passed and as long as I either have power or sunshine, because I can use solar, I could enable people to communicate over the internet.